Welcome to Let's Talk About Health, an informational podcast that gives you insights on health and fitness from experts themselves that you can apply directly to your own personal health and fitness stories. Come join me today to hear all about what they have to say on health and fitness. Welcome to Let's Talk About Health by Bhavna. I am so happy to have you here today. I like we were just talking about it some time back. It it was so it was so sudden and so impromptu that I was not even sure it's going to happen, but here we are making things happen, making mm-hmm. a difference. So it's all about. That's yeah. what it's all about. A hundred percent. Were you working today? Yeah, 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 yeah. Had a uh had a pretty productive day seeing clients in person and remotely and had to uh, get my wife to the hospital to go feed the, I think I told, I can't remember if I told you, but we just had identical girls. So we, um, yeah, so we, we, we had to take care of that too. So working in di- different buckets. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate that. I have no idea how you handle it. It's a, uh, it's a journey. I'm, I'm learning, learning as, uh, as we go. <laughs> I can see because you're doing so many things outside of it. And, uh, that's amazing. So a big thank you from the whole community to whatever you're doing. And it's amazing that you are so passionate about your work, about being a physical therapist, about being into fitness and health and, uh, just being out there to uh, educate people and talk about it on a platform that is accessible to everyone. So mm. a big thank you for that. <clears throat> absolutely. Absolutely. I got to give a shout out to my, my brother, Walter, Walter, just uh, him and I got a workout in this morning. So he's, he's, uh, he's pumping that iron. He's getting, uh, he's getting bigger. So what's up, Walter? <laughs> I love that. Guy. Are you sore, Walter? That's a good question, sore. Walter. Are you are you pretty sore from that workout <laughs> this morning? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay, let me start by asking my favorite question: What is the definition of health and fitness according to you? Mm, great, great question. So, when I when I look at health, I look at like a full spectrum of different. Not today, but definitely <laughs> tomorrow. Walter says, <laughs> yeah, no, it'll come. What is it? Uh, it's 24 to 72 hours. You get the, the DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. Yes. So, yeah, when I look at health, I break it, break it down to different, different buckets. So I look at health as, uh, you know, you got your spiritual health. Mm-hmm. You've got your physical health. You've got your uh, mental health. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'll even add, like, emotional like an emotional health or social health, but in these buckets, it's crucial with health to make sure they're all full. You know, you look at a cup, you want each, each one of these buckets just overflowing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just doing like, for example, us for physical therapists. So ju- just doing the, uh, the physical fitness is not, not quite enough. You, you need to, you might maximize that. But then, you know, you still got to take care of your mental health, prayer, meditation, um, and spiritual health, too. And, you know, doing all the right habits. So I look at health as like the full spectrum, kind of that wellness mentality. And then then I think you said fitness as well, Mm -hmm. right? Health and fitness. And then fitness, that's where you and I get really nerdy <laughs> you know we break break down the uh the physical side of things the physiology so you know how the uh how the body works right and making sure every muscle is at you know peak health nice and strong and then you want to you know want to make sure that the you're 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 addressing like strength training you're addressing uh, endurance or cardiovascular training you're um, addressing like stability, which we do a lot as physical therapists, uh, balance, mobility. So that's like a fit, physically fitness person, physically fit person. It's not someone necessarily that just like massive, you got the big biceps, big calves. It's 
sometimes the the people like top fitness is it's almost like hidden strength right. you might not see it externally <clears throat> but then internally they're, they're strong they're resilient <clears throat> and they they surprise you on how much they can lift and do um so that's kind of how i look at health and fitness what what is your intake on nutrition i know you touched all aspects about physical health and i love to say that to my patients as well because um i've been noticing that we've been doing amazing with my old clients my old patients with uh in regards to physical strength training stretching mobility balance where we're lacking is nutrition mm. Yes, yes, absolutely. What's going on, Peggy? I see Peggy just joined us and she actually came at the perfect time. Her and I were just talking about uh nutrition actually. <laughs> she's uh she's a former um client of mine in um San Diego, but we 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 stay in touch. She's she's a great person. But anyway, so nutrition, yeah, so when when I when I break down nutrition, it's it's a little bit more complex. Mm-hmm. So like the physical th- side of things it, there's still some complexity to it, complexity to it but i right. but I, I try to just i kind of break it down into one you just got to move like everyone moves differently everyone enjoys different types of workouts sports and whatnot so i really just i can encourage my patients just to find what they enjoy because it because it's difficult to do but then when you go to nutrition it's it can be very complex because you got these guys so many different you got the vegan you got the vegetarian um pescatarian i know people that just eat meat only eat meat and they and that 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 works for them so there's and there's research on on different ways to eat but i found i don't know through my own practice of trying different things talking with people it it's different it's a little different for everyone right so i try to not like force any certain type of like nutrition or way to eat um any certain diet so i believe it's it's kind of like the fitness component it's it's all about consistency so similar to like okay like sleep we should be going to sleep at the same time waking up at the same time foods like try to eat you know eat at the same time each day have have a little variety idea there um fitness try to work out at the same time so it's just that it's getting those reps in consistency consistency right. so so yeah nutrition is uh it's complex and i feel like uh, there's a lot of different things that fill fill people's minds and it's like different ideas but it it's all about just seeing what like what what foods give you energy mm-hmm. and then what food foods might if they constipate you you know give you diarrhea i just kind of see how different foods react to you definitely that answers my next question that was how do you approach um hmm. diet fitness and sleep that answers it so <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 and it, it's been a journey for me you know i've i've gone from eating the typical american diet yeah. <laughs> you know the the meat with the potatoes with the you know meatloaf all pork all that stuff mm-hmm. so went from that to moving out to california and then i then i went like straight i went vegetarian then i went vegan for a while and that it, it worked but it didn't it didn't quite click for me i think i've i have irritable bowel syndrome so the vegan like a little bit too much fiber mm-hmm. kind of would bloat me so i so for me i just i i don't really label myself anything i just i try to eat very consciously mm-hmm. be very aware of what i'm putting in my body thank you jamel <laughs> jamel is a great guy he's a he's a pastor he he crushes it on um social media we appreciate you coming on jamel <laughs> I love that. Thank you for joining. <laughs> yes. How do you um can you tell me a little bit about your practice? How do you what kind of clients do you see? How do you approach them? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So the the group I love working with the most are parents and entrepreneurs. So 
a term together as parentpreneur. <laughs> and that, that, that's what I am as well. So it, so like that, that group is, is such a vital um, a group to like work with because they have so many, so many things going on. Right. You know, you have the, you have the marriage uh, to pour into, you have the parenting, whether you have, whether you have one kid or six kids, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's a journey. So balancing those things out with the, with your work and whatnot. And, um, you know, a lot of the entrepreneurs. So then, uh, you know, the business component adds a whole another element. Mm -hmm. So with them, what I've found is a lot of them will put their health, health to the side, the sleep, the sleep will go down. So the reason they're so busy, so stimulated all the time. And then the fitness, there's no fitness, nutrition's all over the place. You know, they'll eat a lot of fast food because again, it's just, we're in a hurry culture. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. But like mentally, since they're parents, the entrepreneurs, they know, they know they have to address this. They know they have to be active. It's just hard, mm -hmm. right? It, it's difficult to fit it in. So I work with this group to just make it easy for them create coaching programs so they can, you know, address their, their strength, their fitness, their um, habits, to, to, to have healthy habits. And, um, you know, a lot of them are dealing with like chronic pain, either like in their neck, shoulders, back. So try to work on that as well. So I create coaching programs for them to, to just make, like, so it fits in their busy life schedule or their, their busy schedule. Um, that's, that's, that's that's what I'm very passionate about because for me, that's, that's kind of when my, my pain started erupting. I, I started out with like thoracic or mid pain uh -huh. and then it worked up to my neck, started getting headaches, got started getting migraines. It's right when I, when I, when I um, entered into the entrepreneur and a parenting journey, it was kind of like the same time. Yeah. So it was just, it was a mess. And if it was hard for me, like as a physical therapist, who's a, uh, like addicted to fitness. If it's hard for me, I'm, it's even harder for other people. So now I try to um, try to help them, try to give them, you know, all my knowledge and just, uh, yeah, keep them fit. That's the only way you can keep going as a, as a husband or wife, a parent, an entrepreneur. You got to stay mentally and physically strong. <laughs> I love that. I love how the personal uh, experience has influenced your life. And it's been uh, pushed you in a positive way to influence people out there who are in the same boat and they're going through the same thing. Mm. I, I love that. That's something I learned today. Parent, parent, entrepreneur. Yeah, How parent, you... parentpreneur. <laughs> I love that term. That is something yeah, that yes. and I love it. Yeah, yeah. It's it, awesome, right? It is. <laughs> it, what? <laughs> Uh, we were talking about uh, chronic pain, uh, chronic pain syndrome. So, what chronic pain do you come across? Because I see a lot of chronic uh, patients, and it's so tricky with them because, mm -hmm. uh, like you were mentioning, it's not just one aspect. It's not just the physical trauma. It's a lot of things. It could be mental. It could be that they're too anxious for a very long time. PTSD. So many things. So, how do you approach? chronic pain um as a whole yeah yeah it, i agree with you it, it's it's so complex mm -hmm. and you know a lot of these people in chronic pain once they come to me they're one they've dealt with it so, so long and they they've been on a journey to get relief and through that journey they try different treatments mm -hmm. usually more passive treatments so kind of like your massage your chiropractor your acupuncture, um, which, which aren't which aren't bad treatments, but usually more is needed. You need more of an, like an active approach. Mm -hmm. But they, so so you've been on been on the journey, and you, your mind's been filled with all this stuff from the doctor, other people. Like you need to do this. I hear all the time, like, oh, you're never going to be able to run again. You're never going to be able to, to um, you know play this sport again. You're never going to be able to do. So it's it's like very, our healthcare system can be like very negative, mm -hmm. very reactive. So these pe people, they, they have the pain, the physical, but now it's mental, it's emotional, usually the spiritual health 
itself is all out of whack. So the the key I found is is kind of slowing down. Like so, finding that root cause, really like digging deep into. Is it, for example, like if someone's been dealing with it for the past ten years, it's it's not going to be like a quick fix. So right. slowing down enough, you know, listening, really seeing what's going on, and then really, really like diagnosing that, like. So getting them, you know, definitely getting them active, getting them moving, because we know the power of movement. Mm -hmm. But then also starting to try to build healthy habits, healthy habits, like eating, sleeping. A lot of times there's a sleeping component too, where the sleep schedule is all to whack, you know, because of the pain, they're only sleeping for three, four hours at a time. So trying to get that right. And, um, and then, yeah, like the nutrition, there's a lot of inflammatory food. So it's taking what I've found, like every healthcare professional does one thing well, but a lot of them don't address the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's what our chronic people need. You know, it's, it's like a, uh, and it's not enough to just go to one, one appointment a week and another appointment a week. That's why I love the coaching. Like, so I, I can keep my clients accountable daily. I, you know, they, they, they message me, I get back with them, back to them at 20, within 24 hours. So these chronic people just need a lot of, a lot of time. They need a lot of, they just, they just, they need a lot of help. They need like a roadmap to follow. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, while we're talking about the chronic pain, they they seem to be very anxious. How do you mm -hmm. calm them or what is your approach towards, um, you know, just calming them down? Like you mentioned, your approach is to slow it down, to get to the root cause as to what's going on. Um, I, I start very slow. That's how I uh, love to analyze and evaluate too. Uh, I start slow and then you know what fits best for your patients, uh, you know, protocol or treatment wise. Mm. And then uh, I, I come across a few um, huddles that that's, you know, they're too anxious. They're like, no, it's too painful. It's too painful. And there's always the constant pain. So how do you uh, approach such a scenario? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to kind of go into my, my story for a bit. Mm -hmm. So I've, throughout my life, I've dealt with a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression from really like my teens. Like, so it's so a pretty far back. So teens carried over to my 20s and whatnot. So, so because of that, I, I really got to understand like what it does to the mindset. So, so because of that, I'm able to really come into their shoes mm -hmm. and I found out early in my career the the problem i was having was was one i was still already i was still dealing with that but i would allow these patients they patients or clients that come in they'd have all you know the chronic pain issues nine ten out of ten pain mm -hmm. and i was taking that on so i was taking it on and instead of me bringing them up like i was coming down and i wasn't able to i wasn't able to encourage or coach or motivate them so so i had to kind of i had to one really work on myself get my self-care really really high so then i could be a rock mm -hmm. so i could i could still be empathetic i could like absorb absorb everything that i'm saying but like after hearing that like you said slowing down and whatnot now it's time to now it's time to really like bring you up right. like, to win to 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 encourage that's why so so what really changed my mindset or my practice as a physical therapist is once i started identifying as a coach person a physical therapist because like that's what people need especially in pain they need they need like a coach to i don't mean like yelling at them right? like not necessarily that it's just constantly <laughs> constantly like they need that encouragement they need that yeah. listen they need someone to listen to them and then create like an action. Like, so there's a difference between like listening and then you, you get kind of getting drawn down and like, you're thinking about what you're going to say. And there's like active listening, like really absorbing everything. And then like, okay, 
based on this, let's do this, 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 like creating a roadmap. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so now, now I'm able to just like constantly keep them up, keep them, uh, motivated, lifted. Um, you know, I talk about, I get to, uh, I try to talk about wins like Mary or Frank share, share some wins with me, uh, from the last time we talked to now. So just keeping, keeping it really motivating, positive. I try to not even, I don't even really talk about pain. Like they bring it up, we get into it, but it, it does such like a psychological thing. So I try, I, 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 I kind of avoid talking. It's not like I'm avoiding the pain, but it, it's, it's avoidance to kind of get their, get their mindset because they think about that enough. Yeah. Our time together, I, I don't need them to be thinking about the pain anymore. Um, I, I want, I just want them to get better. Mm -hmm. I kind of focus on what's possible. If we can get you out of pain, get your life back, et cetera, et cetera. Right. A hundred percent understandable. <laughs> uh, just keep them motivated. Trust me. I get that side also. I, I get, I become the coach. I'm like, yeah, you got this. Ten <laughs> more to go. Give me that squad. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have that part too. Yes, and yes, like, yes. Mastery, come on. <laughs> <laughs> we have that coach part too, but yeah, uh, just talking about their personal uh, stuff. Oh, when was this? And when when was your kid's birthday? And when was the last time you took your family out for dinner, movies? Mm -hmm. It really comforts them and they go back to the happy moments. And yeah. yeah. Really. The hell? Yeah, that's that's super powerful. Yeah, Bre like talking about things that they love that really lift lift them up, and, and then also um, like anything that brings them anxiety. Say like the smartphone, smartphone or just work or whatnot. Trying trying to like create a space for them just to leave all that. Mm -hmm. Like so. I always try to encourage clients like no like no put the the smartphone away, remove work from your mind. This is a this is like your time. I'm gonna I'm just gonna be here listening to you, um, serving you. Right. So like take advantage like take advantage of that. This is this is your time just to let's face it, a lot of these people don't have like no one even even like, like the parentpreneurs, so they might have a, a spouse, might have their children. But you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of marital issues, and there's a lot of like a lot of marriages get to the point where it's it's hard to like listen to each other, like it because, it, because again they're going so fast. It's it's hard like even for couples to like just make eye contact, and that and that's and, you know need to be able to slow down to do that. So if they're not getting in the home, they're not getting at work. When we're with them, this is a chance for them to receive that. So they can feel that love and then hopefully that love that care can transfer over to the house and then 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 it can it can take the marriage to the next level the parents so so it's kind of cool the home life can pull into the uh pour into the care or, or like the care we give them can pour back into the home yeah. and then yeah then once the home's ignited then you we were talking about society earlier once you get the homes right that just spreads in the neighborhoods, yeah. to the yeah. churches, to the to the city, everything. Yeah, a hundred percent. Love that. That's beautiful. Like Walter just said, it's it's golden. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Walter, you're golden, man. You're golden. That 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 is a wise individual. So we, we you should get him on a live sometime. He is uh he's he's got some deep thoughts. <laughs> Lies, where you been? You need to do a live session too. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I love that. What are your approaches to injury prevention? Injury prevention, yes, mm -hmm. that's a great question. So, honestly, I, I feel like this is this is like one of the most important things. Is this this is kind of the whole proactive care instead of reactive care? Okay. Um, <laughs> it cracks me up. So, so like being being proactive is 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 everything. So, mm -hmm. like what we what we see a lot, like people people only come to 
us once they get the diagnosis, they get the pain, and then, and that, and it, it's so important, like in evaluation to the introduction to tell them it's all not about, about the pain. It, it's it's all about getting you a solution. Mm-hmm. So yes, we want to get you out of pain, but we also we want to focus on getting you back to walking, running, right. the sport. So the setting their mindset is, is so crucial. And then now, now, now to kind of go back to injury prevention. So like being pr- proactive is, is everything. So making sure like, cons- you're consistent with the, like the habits. So habits on a daily basis, mm-hmm. consistent with um, like sleep and, and like finding, just finding like, like really just prioritizing the health, the health and the fitness. So, if it's like a, a high priority, it's not gonna, it's not gonna take pain to, right. for you to do something about it. So like almost, almost trying to teach people that that your health, your fitness, um, and ultimate injury prevention is like your identity. So, like like just like helping them to find joy in it, yeah. and just so again movement, nutrition, sleep habits, and and just you know, doing that stuff on a daily basis. And something that helps mm-hmm. to <clears throat> keep people consistent is community. Yes. So having a community to do your health journey with. So for example, like Walter and I, and we have some other guys we work work uh, out with our church. We all keep each other accountable mm-hmm. for uh, uh, injury prevention. Right. Even though so, sometimes I do joke with them being the physical therapist. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I'll be like, you know, I might tell them I'll lift more weights to, you know, and then potentially I could cause injury. And then I get, no, no, it's, it's, it's all a big joke, okay. obviously, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's all a big joke, but, but no, so keeping it, uh, keeping it all, like when you have the community, you got, you can keep each other accountable with the habits, the working out and all that stuff to prevent injuries. That's really nice. Yeah. I love the community that you have, and that's really important. Most of the, I'm I'm finding out that most of the, uh, the biggest cause why people are giving up nowadays is because of not enough, uh, motivation, that mm. comes from one another. Also, like I remember working out so well when I was in back in India with my brother, and he used to be like, "Get your ass in the gym. What you doing? You know." <laughs> Uh, that's that's how I got into fitness and that's how mm-hmm. I started gymming but once I came here it just just life came in the way you know and it's just so difficult to do the journey and trust me it's so difficult for him also to do the journey back there so he's like now I don't have anyone to push you know so he's got a few friends now and it's all you know uh, he's building a community of himself but it it's very important to have people who can push you and motivate you to just get your ass in the gym, you know? Yes, yes, yes. hundred percent, hundred percent community. We, we all need, we all need community. We need that love. Yeah. We need that support around us. And again, another thing with injury prevention, it's, we have, you know, since you were talking about India and now you moved to the States, it's like reprogramming people's minds here. Again, it's I'm not not sure how it's in India in, in India, but here again it's more like reactive healthcare right. versus proactive healthcare. So if we're always in the mentality like being proactive with our health, again with each bucket, it's going to keep just injury injury out of our uh, out of our mindset, mm-hmm. and we're we're always going to stay on top of things to prevent the diagnosis prevent the uh injury because once 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 injury the pain happens that 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 can potentially change your life Correct. like just do a like a complete 180 mm-hmm. affect your mind affect the your relationships and everything just goes downhill definitely yeah what would be the one piece of advice that you would give for the people who are looking to start business like you have started and I can say that you're so well established and successful <laughs> in what you're doing. 
So what's one piece of advice that you would give to them? Ooh, ooh. It's a, ooh, it's a journey. It's a journey. So <laughs> I, yes, I, I love business. Like I feel like business is right up there with uh, marriage, parenting, like it between, between your spiritual health, marriage, parenting, in business th these are the things that are gonna challenge you inform you more than like anything else in my opinion so business whether you're like whether if you're on here you're a new business owner or you're thinking about going into business the key thing is is figuring out what your one thing is mm -hmm. so there there's a popular book called one thing um can't think of the author's name it's 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 in my book backpack you mind if i grab it real quick oh for sure so there's this right here uh, so this is one thing by gary keller so so the key thing with business is is like finding finding what your one thing is mm -hmm. and it's it's not always easy to find but it's it's where your 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 passion meets your skill okay. so like what you're good at to me it's like what what just what like fires you up throughout the day like what keeps you up at night what what uh you know just that that passionate thing that you love love doing so once you find that one thing it's a matter of just doing it over and over and over and over and over again so for example like if it's fitness so um, taking that fitness that one thing so making sure your your own fitness health is is like top level like just constantly trying to be uh, uh you know uncomfortable get better get better get better and then you can use fitness to um serve other people as well right it's pre pretty much you know business is just you know you got your marketing your sales your fulfillment and then you know your operations so just so the marketing, you just got to get your one thing out there. You get it out to the world. You know, you get, everyone sees your passion. Everyone gets excited. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, sales is like, sales is ultimately coaching or right. serving. So then you want to, you want to help serve them. You want to help coach them. Um, and then just fulfillment. And then you just given everything away. So that'd be my biggest piece of advice is just like, find the one thing and I'd never quit. It's um, it's a journey. It's hard. Like anything great in life is difficult. So it's a matter of just like never, never, never quitting. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like you were talking about your journey right now. What is one piece of advice you would give to the eighteen-year-old yourself? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so many things. So many things. So many things. For, yeah, yeah. For me. When I was 18, I, uh, I did, I lacked courage. Mm -hmm. I lacked courage and I, I got in my head a lot. I just overthought everything. So for someone that's 18 or even in their twenties, so I, I struggled with that for a long time. Just like the, the key is just to go, go for it. Like get uncomfortable. Yeah. Because even at 18, you kind of know, you know, what you should be doing to, to like better your life but it's just so easy to avoid it and be immature and choose the bad decisions so and just like overthinking right so choose that uncomfort like the earlier the better is the more you the more you tap into that courage the more you're going to get um confident so the courage ultimately as you get the reps in courage consistency bam 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 get those reps in then it'll turn into confidence and then people people resonate with that confidence because that's ultimately you know that's, that's what, what what we want as humans it's like a that's a um that's just a need i like have that confidence like people people just feel like feel that and then they it makes them confident as well so that's beautiful thank you for sharing that that was really mm -hmm. wonderful. I, I think um, that is also one piece of advice that I would like to give myself when I was 18 was just go for it, you know? 
Mm. Um, I've always been the person who will jump first, think last. But mm. I I found out yep, that moving from from India to the U.S. That's that's a big. Uh, was it just you that moved yes. here? Or? Mm. That was also a jump first, think last kind of thing. Uh, I just thought about the next two years, and I wanted to challenge myself. Just put myself in a very difficult situation, just because I was getting too comfortable. I I had. I was doing good with my grades. I was doing good with like my um, extracurricular activities. Like I was the president of my college, and uh, we were hosting so many events. I was very close to starting my own business, but it was just getting too comfortable. So I wanted to challenge myself, and my dad just joined the life some time back, and he would he would agree how much of a rebel I was. <laughs> 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 decided okay if she has to jump let's you know support her any which mm. is and here i am no regrets and uh that was one of the uh, best decision that i made back then so i i would say yes like uh if only i had a little more confidence back then i would do a few things differently and a few things earlier you know just sure. start earlier and just start like this podcast was supposed to start a year year and a half back <laughs> and i was like okay we'll think about it just the name for this took forever to decide and uh, then the logo and everything and i was being i was just procrastinating and then one fine day uh, when when my parents they were visiting last year and they were here for three months. We had a wonderful time. And then when they went back, I was like, okay, I'm bored. It's time to get uncomfortable. I'm getting too comfortable now. And yes. then I just sat down. Um, we had like so many names for the podcast. And then I was like, let's talk about health. And it just, in in a second, and I knew it, that's, that's the name I want. We decided and it just started. Mm. So here we are. <laughs> mm. That's beautiful. And I want, I want to say something off that because this is another uh, business tip or even a health tip. Progress is better than per perfection. Wow. So, yeah. So, so, like, focusing on the progress of your health journey mm -hmm. or the business journey is so much more powerful than, like, you're trying to do getting it uh getting it perfect because it then it delays us from from starting again like you said a year and a half perfect. went by so um progress over perfection i love, I love that i love that Did we get a we question, do have a question. Mm -hmm. Let's see hey doc so i know what i'd like to do but right now i'm waiting for the opportunities to open up what do i do while i'm in my prep phase or good habits to acquire now mm. that's all Buddy Walter. Yeah, it's a good question, Walter. So let's see. Right now, I'm waiting for the opportunities to open up. Um, so I'd say, like prep phase. So this kind of goes into that proactive mindset, that uh, injury prevention. Mm -hmm. So what I'd say, Walter, is one what you're doing right now, where you're getting back into your, your working out your health journey, is is massive. So keep keep showing up keep showing up with the community or not. So say, say like three or four people are supposed to work out with you, even if they don't show up, still show up anyways, like build that, build that um, uh, resiliency yeah. in yourself. Then it gets to the point where people, when people show up, it's just a, it's another, it's a benefit. And you can, you can even start motivating them. Mm -hmm. And then other habits uh, to acquire is, you know, one one big one. I guess we haven't really talked about too much is like mindset. Just take captive all your thoughts throughout the day. Like, are you? Is your mindset, is your thoughts, going more into a fear based? Which fear is like the lowest one? I don't know if you ever seen the emotional mm -hmm. the Abra, Abra, Abraham. Hicks, emotion, there's like 22 different emotions, but fear is on the bottom where like love, joy, 
mm-hmm. pieces at the top. So another good habit is just like just really seeing how you're how you're thinking throughout the day, uh, like what you're focusing on, your language, like how you're, you're talking to yourself, and then um, physiology, which we talked about. So th- those are like three massive pillars to really uh, be in the prep phase, be in the preparation phase, and just be prepared. Be prepared for any challenge that comes your comes your way. Um, is there, in this life, there will be there will be many challenges. I love that that uh, you said just show up. That's the best way to be prepared for anything that comes your way. So once you just show up, you're there. And what's the worst that could happen is you're already facing it, so you're there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, I love that. Um, what is one last piece of advice that you would give to our audience out there? Mm, one last piece of advice. I would say talking about health specifically. So, that there's, so there's, many, there's many different habits right. you can address, like good habits, but, but just focus on one. Mm-hmm. So like habit, habit stacking is amazing. So like if, if you, you, if you master one habit, say, say it's, say it's fitness, you focus working out 30 minutes a day and you show up day after day, after day, after day, that will start pouring into other habits. Mm -hmm. So I found that's better than trying to start a bunch of things at once. It's like, Oh, I'm going to sleep for nine hours. I'm going to start working out for an hour. I'm going to start eating vegan. Again, it, it's too much. Mm-hmm. It's way too much. So focus on one habit, get really good at, at it and like make it easy too. So like, for example, fitness, literally just start out working and working out like five to 10 minutes, but show up every day. Mm-hmm. Once you do that, that eventually you're going to get to 15, 20, 25 minutes yeah. and other habits will ignite too. So make it easy. And just and just focus on one one habit. Right. That's that's great. <laughs> I have to learn that because I keep having a list of things, and I was literally when you were talking about it, I was thinking about all the things that I try to make perfect, and I end up with nothing. And I'm like, okay, he is so right that I need to focus on one habit to begin one, with. It's one, one, mm-hmm. one thing. One thing. One thing with everything, habits, your business journey, uh, one mm-hmm. spouse. It should only be one spouse. <laughs> one, uh, <laughs> one, 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 everything. All of those. It better uh, be uh, one spouse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All the, um, you know, all the, uh, pe- all the people in the Bible, the heroes in the Bible, are the ones that had many wives and never worked out. So just one, <laughs> one, one, one. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Where, uh, where What's going on, our audience? Uh, Michael? Thanks for coming on, bud. <laughs> you joined the late, Michael. I know, I know, Michael. We'll, have to, we'll send you the recording, bud. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, share it with you. You let us know how well, how we did. <laughs> <laughs> where can our audience find you? About like your so- social media for your work. Where can everyone find you? Uh, let's see. So, so I've been pouring into Instagram a lot. So. <laughs> my name doctor dot hux dot dpt um then I, I use my facebook page a lot as well so i'd say those two things and then i have a uh, a free master class that if anyone's interested they can they can go through so i'd say those those are those are like the top three things where people can find me interact with me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i have to look into the master class myself okay yeah 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 i'll definitely send it to you and, and like- like we were discussing, we have plans. We have, we have a few things that we have to work on. So we're gonna get to it. Oh yes, yes, yes. Well, we start changing one person influences yeah. one one person's pain at a time. Mm-hmm. And that's gonna spread, right? Yeah. Spread uh, to the homes, to society. Mm-hmm. Just make a make a difference in this world. One hundred percent. I love that. Thank you so much for taking the time out today. I know it's been so uh so such a crazy day and i was not even i was i was not even sure that we would make it today and have uh but we had a wonderful session today 
one of my mm-hmm. favorites i loved it thank you for sharing those pieces of advice uh the small small uh things that you said the quotes that you gave that they really they really uh kind of changed my perspective towards how i see, i see life and therapy my health and fitness mm. so i think i'm going to start using that as well and i do need to start reading one thing for sure <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely and, and thank you for what you do having this uh this podcast this is this is impacting a lot of people and i'm i'm excited to see the the journey of um this podcast thank you thank you so much it means a lot to me well mm-hmm. have a lovely night uh say hi to your twin oh baby girl we'll and <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll stay connected thank you so All much right. Sounds good. Take care now. Bye. Bye everyone. Thank you for listening to our talk about health. You can follow me on Instagram at bhavna.devnani, on Facebook at bhavna devnani and we'll leave all the information in the description below. Thank you.